y'all welcome back or welcome to my channel my name is Sierra and I post videos on this channel every single Friday I post Christian booktube related content so reviews read with me vlogs favorite lists all sorts of things I mean if you just look around my channel a little bit you will get the gist of what I put out. Today's video is actually a concept that I thought of while filming my favorite biblical fiction books. I was reviewing a Francine Rivers book and I was like, what if I did a breakdown of all of her books? Because I actually have read every single one of them. There are a lot of books to cover. She has written a lot. I'm not sure how many, but a lot. So just some ground rules before I get into it. One, these are all my opinions. If I tell you I don't like a book, that's my opinion. You might really love it. So don't take my words as fact. Two, following that, just please don't get offended. <laughs> Three, I am not going to be doing a full summary of the plot or anything like that. If you want to know the summaries or what the book is about, look it up on Goodreads or Amazon or whatever. And yeah, with that, let's get into it. So I'm going to be doing this by publication year. So starting with her first book, then going through the latest book she has published. So obviously we're going to start with Redeeming Love. I have talked about this book before over a year ago now. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. So I read this book over a year ago in January 2020 and I did briefly give a little review of it in a vlog I did. I loved it very much. I had high expectations because it is a very popular book among the Christian book community. Like it's definitely up there in like I'd say it's it's very popular. A lot of people know about it. So I had extremely high expectations and like all of them were met. I love it so much. It's definitely five stars. I want to read it again as I grow older and you know can appreciate parts of it better. Loved that book. Okay next is her first series which is the Mark of the Lion series. My sister got these for me my 15th birthday 14th or 15th birthday so i'm gonna break this into two parts the first two books are a voice in the wind and an echo in the darkness they can function as a duology like no argument about it you can read these two and be just fine the third one is kind of more of a resolution for characters that we came in contact with earlier on but you don't have to have the third book to make it a series. There's no cliffhanger by the end of the second book. I cannot talk up these books enough. They are so beautiful. The character arcs and development of all the characters are just stunning. And that is something that I harp on in basically every review I do is there needs to be character progression, a character arc, development, like dynamic characters in a story have to go from point A to B within the entire span of the book, not just like they're there, like barely any progression, and then in the last two chapters they progress a lot. That irritates me so much, but these books are just phenomenal in the way that they they carry out and every single character you meet is so important. Like basically all of them change throughout the book. And the main character convicted my personal, convicted me in my personal faith life like so much. The third book, As Sure As The Dawn, definitely isn't, if in my opinion, isn't quite up to the standard as the first two books. I did enjoy it very much, but there are a couple of chapters where it's very preachy honestly a lot about the history of Israel and there there is a section of it that's either a history lecture or a sermon which isn't quite why I read books but if you get past that one section it is a good book and I do love it very much it tied up the stories of those characters in the first two books very well and I I do love the story so not quite as good, but still good. Next up is The Scarlet Thread. 
I did not enjoy this book, hence why I don't own it. If I don't own it, then I didn't enjoy it. This book was meant to be a split, but it just was executed, in my opinion, very poorly. And I am a massive fan of split time novels. I, I've read multiple of them and just fallen quite in love with that genre. So I was looking forward to reading The Scarlet Thread because I have read so many other and I was just so disappointed. The modern day story was, it was very lacking. I did not like basically any of it, the, the elements in the modern day story. The historical story was, yes, I did like that one. The way the stories worked, I could have just taken the historical one and the, the modern day story could have been left out entirely and it would have been just fine if the book had, you know, the, the his, historical portion of the book had just been written up a little more. That was a fine element to it and I could have enjoyed it a whole lot more. The modern day elements just didn't cut it for me. There was a plot to it, but it was kind of like I, I've said before, a lot of the plot happened in the last like quarter of the book, which made the first three quarters of the book extremely boring. <laughs> okay, following that bad review it is a good review of The Atonement Child. I have said quite a bit about this book in my 2020 favorites wrap up, which if you, you know, want to learn more about it, go over there and hear me talk about it. I will just say once again that this book completely changed my perspective on certain like big moral issues. I adore this book. It is definitely in my favorites. I love I love it so much. Okay, the next book is The Last Sin Eater. I have read the book and there was a movie adaptation of this book that I have also watched. And I'm going to be quite honest, I'm not sure how I struggled through either of them. This book has no plot until like the last couple of chapters, which again, what's the point of a book if there's not gonna be no change until the last couple of chapters? It's not an awful book. I just don't quite understand the point of it. Like there was no real message or point of it and the culture that it was set in was very strange. Okay, next up is a book that I am a little like, it's in, it's in a gray area for me, and that is Leo Tis Garden. I want to reread this book eventually, like when I have nothing else to do, and just kind of chart the four main characters, like progression and backgrounds and how they get to where they are at the end of the story. This book does have a plot, I have to give that to it. It definitely does have a plot. There are so many moving dynamics. And this, the four main characters, like their stories do weave together in a sense, but the resolution was so lacking. Like basically Francine Rivers just left it up to us to decide what the ending was. There was only one definite conclusion, one definite conclusion for any of the characters. The other three is just like, you get to decide the la Like I honestly thought I had missed a chapter, but like, no, there's no missing chapter. It's just left up to us to decide. And I was like, hold on a moment. That just doesn't make sense. All right, I will give a small mention to The Shoebox, which was published next. I did read it this past Christmas. I have it, but it's packed away with my Christmas stuff. That was a very sweet book. Definitely something to read to children. I, I did quite enjoy it and it was a very sweet story. I have packed away my Christmas stuff though, so I don't actually have it with me. I thought I'd just include that briefly because it is a very sweet story. Next up is the first book that I ever read from Francine Rivers, and that is Lineage of Graves. I love this book. I have talked about it at least twice before. I was gonna say plenty of times before, but I'm not sure how often I've actually talked about it on my YouTube channel. I know I rave about it to basically everyone. Like. Five stars, phenomenal, read it more than once, and I adore it. All right, the next two books are And the Shofar Blue and Sons of Encouragement. They happen to be published, you know, one than the other, and I happen to not like either of them. So my thing with And the Shofar Blue is that there was no great, like, And the Shofar Blue. The title just feels like there's gonna be this big moment where it's like, I get it 
and there is supposed to be a moment where it's like I get it but I don't get it the character doesn't get it and the motivations of the characters and the backstories of them were very like emotionally driven there's one character in particular that just like he's supposed to be a good character and he kind of is he is in a sense but like he's a very emotionally driven and that it, I don't think that's the way he was supposed to be written he's supposed to be like this solid guy who's you know changing for the better I don't know it was not written that way so it was very like contradictory of here's how I want the character to be but here's how the character actually is and there were also just so many problems with that like within the book within the plot that were just like this is not a good story my deal with sons of encouragement is that it basically read like a history book of the history of israel there were hardly any character emotions no character development except for the last story about silas that was the only character that had like a smidge of character development the other four because Sons of Encouragement is a group of five stories about men in the Bible who were kind of like overshadowed by greater men. And it, again, it just basically read like a history textbook and I did not appreciate it. Not like Lineage of Grace. I thought it was going to be just like Lineage of Grace, but it was not. Okay, next up are two books that I adore and that is Marta's Legacy. I love this series so much. It's just a duology, but they are like, again, thick books. I will give a short summary of these. Basically, it starts with one character, Marta, and then it follows her through her journey, through having a daughter, then through that daughter's perspective, having her daughter, then, you know, continuing through four... four yeah, four generations, four or five. I think it's just four and then it ends with the fifth generation and I was not ready for it to stop. I was like, I need, I need this to continue. Uh, what I love is that these books span from pre-World War II through the year I was born actually. Another fun fact about these books that I just need to include is that one of the characters in the last like generation last generation in the books he goes to war and is wounded and gets sent to Launchdale medical regional center uh which is literally 10 minutes down the road from me <laughs> i just think that's so cool <laughs> because for those of you who don't know i live in germany because my dad is stationed here in the uh, u.s army and larmsey the hospital is just literally like 10 15 minutes down the road that's just so cool Next up is Bridge to Haven, which I absolutely adore. This spans like the the life of a girl from the day she was born through her mid-20s, I believe. So many twists and turns. So many things happen in this book. I quite enjoyed it. Like I really loved it. I finished it, I think, in like three days, which is really like the size of this book in three days is really an accomplishment for me. So that just shows how much I love it and I definitely want to read it again one day because the story is just so touching and endearing. And we shall end with the masterpiece, which is in fact a masterpiece. Definitely not my favorite Francine Rivers book because it's very contemporary. Like it is 100% contemporary. It's probably like set within the last five, six years. It was published in 2018, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it was it's set in like 2017, 2018. The thing that I loved most about it is there are some spiritual supernatural elements to it. There are just like a couple scenes in particular that when I read it, I was like, oh, yes, yes, this is amazing. All right, well, that is every Francine Rivers book ever in one video. This video is probably going to be forever long, but we'll see. We'll see how well I can edit it down. But thank you so much for watching. I hope this gave you like a little insight, encouragement on what to read, not to read of Francine Rivers. I do like the majority of her books and I'm not saying she's an awful author just because she wrote a, a couple 
ones that I didn't like. I think there's definitely potential for others to like the books that I don't, but I'm just saying that like they're not my go-to. I hope I didn't offend anyone by saying those. I felt so mean <laughs> giving negative review, but I'm gonna be honest. So, and I, and I wanted to do this video. Like I wanted to say those things. So I hope they all make sense to you. And thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you next week for whatever video that is. Until then, bye.